I saw that blanket. <laughs> going at the other event, and people kept stumbling upon it. I was watching the video, and people kept grabbing it and looking at it. It was so funny. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah, I think we should. Well, welcome, everybody. How is everybody this afternoon, this evening, I suppose? Good, good. My name is Ken Coker. I'm the store manager here. Tonight's going to be a little bit different kind of event. Usually, have everybody seated, and it's a demonstration. Tonight is a hands-on skills development class that we're going to work on. Um, there might be times where you may want to gather and come up around as I do some of the basic stuff, and then we'll have you guys use your, um, you know, use your own stations there as we do, um, especially the practice, and then the finish up. So what we're going to do tonight um, is we're going to practice a couple of skills. For those of you that have been to, how many of you have been to a knife skills class here before? Just one of you? Okay, so this will be just one of you. Okay, cool. So we're actually going to um, teach you a couple of basic skills. We're calling this Knife Skills 201. The first class we focus solely on chopping skills. Today we're going to review those skills for everybody who's been at the classes before. So we're going to teach that skill again because that's the one, these knives are the ones most people are kind of scared of, intimidated by, and or use wrong all the time. So we're going to teach you guys how to use these chopping knives. And then we're also going to teach you a couple simple paring knife skills this is another knife that a lot of people are scared of because you're supposed to use it facing yourself and a lot of people are afraid to so they use them wrong and it's actually more dangerous when you use it the wrong way. So we're going to teach you some very basic simple paring knife skills as well. We're going to practice peeling some apples, peeling some potatoes, we're going to practice chopping some of the apples and potatoes and celery and then we're going to have everybody make their own fruit salad. So everybody's going to get to have something to eat at the end and or something to take home with them whichever you'd like to do. Um, so we're going to do a bunch of chopping and you guys will get a chance to develop those skills over the course of the next 90 minutes or so. All right, so welcome. We got more, more joining us? We do. We have four more people. All right, come on in. So we got... Actually, that table is all... That, you may want to stay where, right there. <laughs> yeah. That table, this table, we can reorganize it, but it's definitely not uh, ready for stepping right in. So welcome, ladies. Okay. Um, We'll go through the handouts in just a bit. Before we get started, I want to sh share with you guys, whenever we do these types of events, we have special offers that are for tonight only. So I know some of you guys were at the event last Tuesday. You may have seen some things you liked, didn't get them. We have a different offers for tonight. So first of all, when each of you came in, you got either a $10 or a $20 gift card. If it was $10, it was for everybody just for attending. If somebody brought somebody to the store that's never been here before and is new to Cutco, then you both got a $20 coupon. And they're, they're, those are good tonight only on anything Cutco in the store. So you can use those on any Cutco product. If you just wanted a peeler, you can take 10 or 20 off. They don't individually discount those types of things very often. So that's a nice way to get something at a very discounted price um, just for attending the event. And then so you got either the 10 or the 20 that are good tonight only. And then we've got what they're calling the one, two, three, four, five offer. So we have five different offers for tonight. In, well, actually six because we have the sets are on sale 20 to 25% off too. So with any individual chopping knife, you can get a free peeler or a cutting board. We're going to talk about the cutting board and surfaces here. So with any of the chopping knives, we have five different style chopping knives that you can choose from. You get a free peeler or a cutting board. Again, that's a tonight only offer. With any kitchen knife or scissors, so if you, with the chopping knife specifically, you can get that. With any individual knife or scissors, you get a free three pack of the grip sticks. The grip sticks are those bag clips that a lot of you guys are nodding your head. Those things are really cool. So we have three packs of those that are normally five bucks. You can get one of those um, with any kitchen knife or scissors. Buy any two kitchen knives or scissors, you get a free gadget of your choice. So with any two knives, any of the gift sets that are out there, or just any two pieces that you want. So if you decide you want the two pieces that we're going to use tonight, you get a free gadget. The gadgets would include the peeler, the ice cream scoop, the, the uh, uh, what else do we have? The can opener is a new gadget. The, what was that? Pizza cutter is another one, thank you. So any of the gadgets that we have, we can also throw the spatulas in there, the little turn and serve, the little pie and cake slicing knife, which is really nice. We could do any of the gadgets with any two knives. And then buy three, get the four, three on all Cutco. There's an asterisk here. If you guys get the catalogs or the emails, you'll notice that they have several products that are limited on the Cutco buy three, get the four, three. Here in the store, we could do all the Cutco products. Santoku's included, cheese knives included, gadgets included, anything. That's one of the benefits of coming to the store versus just buying directly from the company. We can work a little bit different deals. So anything in the store that's cut, go buy three at the four three, 
And then if there's five pieces or more that you want, we can do a straight 20% off of any five pieces. So you don't have to buy a set to get the discount. If there's any five pieces we can put together for you, we can do the 20% off just straight off the, off the top. So a couple of cool offers that we have for you guys for tonight only. And um, again, we'll get into the, uh, we'll, we'll review those again at the end for you guys. Okay, a couple of quick things here. If you guys look at your handouts, we'll start, we'll just dive right in here. Right there, right here. There's, uh, there's, more, there's another station over here, if, if you guys don't have room at that table, and then we also have this other table I can clean up and, and make it happen. You guys got, you got a place? Everybody good over there? Maxine? Yep. You guys good? Margaret? Yes. Fun place? All right, yes. welcome ladies. Thank you. Traffic was terrible. You might have some latecomers. Yep, we got, we got a few more struggling in, so she's struggling in. Yes, struggling and struggling. <laughs> Yep. So we, have space. we have two space stations right here. We can put them together if we want to. Welcome, guys and gals. Okay. So if you guys want to grab your hand out real quick, we'll just we'll just dive in and go right through the uh, through the handouts here. So the first thing we'll talk about is the the, the, the way that the knife is made. So the anatomy of a knife. So you've got the back of the knife is called the spine. The front of the knife is called the cutting edge. You've got the tip and then you've got the heel of the knife. Now one of the things that it points to here in the middle, you'll see it says the bolster. A bolster is, we don't have a bolster on any of our knives. Let me see if I can find an old one that has what kind of looks like a bolster. So this is the old, this is the old Cutco chef's knife from like the 60s. You see how it has this thick piece of steel that's kind of coming down right here? It's not part of the blade. Like this, the blade goes all the way to the end. This one has a piece of metal right there. That's what the bolster is. And when they, when they have a bolster, most, most knives, it's this part right here that, that kind of comes down, that thick, big chunk of metal you'll see on a lot of knives. The reason it's put there is for grip. And they also can add balance by adding weight right there. So if it's not perfectly balanced, they can balance it out. But most knives aren't made to be held comfortably by the handle. So they put a big chunk of steel there so it gives, um, gives the, the chef something to hold on to. And chefs are trained to hold on to the blade. It's what's called a pinch grip. So they pinch the blade and then they hold the handle, where ours are designed to do that on the handle itself. Okay. So can everybody see the difference between our handle that has the pinch built into it versus a regular chef's knife where it's a round, bulky handle. So chefs are trained to grab the blade and pinch so you can get that same leverage. Ours are just designed to be used leverage handle first. You can use it if you like. So some of you guys may have had knife skills classes before or been trained how to use the knife like that. It's perfectly okay if you like to do the pinch grip, it's not gonna hurt anything. And our knives can be comfortably held that way just as easily. But again, ours are designed, I always hold the handle because that's how it's most comfortable to me. And the blade, I don't like the idea of the blade in my hand personally. So. Again, pinch grip or the cutco grip, which is designed to hold your hand. Our wedge lock handle is designed to fit any hand, left, right, big, or small. So it doesn't matter whether you're righty or lefty, it's gonna feel exactly the same for everybody who holds on to it. So that's again, from a safety perspective, you wanna make sure you have a good hold on the blade. You've got the handle. The part that goes into the handle is called a tang. So you see that our steel goes all the way down through the handle and then all the way through. So there's no pressure points. A lot of knives you'll see the steel goes only halfway down the handle or sometimes it'll go all the way down but then it's missing on the other side so it's any of those things are just going to fall apart very quickly over time or loosen or there's pressure points so they get damaged real easily. This gives you again perfect balance, a nice safe grip that you've got comfortably in your hand and you've got full control of the blade. And then the little, the little round circles are rivets, that's what they're called, rivets that hold them together. Ours are made of nickel silver which allows them to be put in the dishwasher and they don't expand or contract with the heat like brass and stainless rivets do. If you, if you look at wooden handled knives that have been through the dishwasher, you'll see them cracked because as the heat heats up the rivets, they expand and they will crack the wood over time, which gives more places for bacteria and gross stuff to kind of gather and collect. So just the overall anatomy of a knife and then the very end of the knife, they call the butt end of the knife. Um, just so you have a, a general idea of the different parts of the knife. So the cutting edge is obviously one of the more important parts of the knife. And you want to make sure you keep your knives super sharp. So from a safety perspective, not only how you hold the knife matters, but also the sharpness of the knife is very, very key. 
A sharper knife is a significantly safer tool. When you have a knife that's dull, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And when you have a dull knife, the tendency is to push harder and put more effort and oomph behind it. That's where people tend to get hurt more. When the knife is super sharp and it just does what it's supposed to do, I don't have to push very hard, I have 100% control and precision with the tool, and I don't want to cut myself, but if I do end up cutting myself, I really want to cut myself with a super sharp knife. Because if the knife is super sharp, first of all, it doesn't hurt that badly, and secondly, it heals much more quickly. Have you ever cut yourself with a dull razor? You know real quick when you cut yourself because it hurts like hell. You ever cut yourself with a sharp razor and didn't even know you were cutting and cut until you see blood? It happens all the time. Sharper tools are much safer to use. Do the job properly and again, God forbid, you do have an accident, much easier to heal, much less pain involved. So again, let's not cut ourselves tonight, please. I don't want to test that theory, but when, when it does happen, eventually it will. Make sure that you are, uh, are, are using a, a sharp tool. Um, another thing when it comes to safety things, when you're using sharp tools, again, you have to always respect them. So don't set them in dirty, soapy water that you then have to go fishing for stuff. That's one way people cut themselves all the time is they're just reaching. When you put them in the dishwasher, if you choose to, our materials are dishwasher safe, but just like any high quality tool, the better you take care of it, the better it's gonna look and it doesn't get all banged up from all the banging around in the dishwasher and stuff like that. So a lot of people choose to hand wash them, which is great. But if you do put them in the dishwasher, be careful of what you're doing. I always put the blades down. I don't leave the blades up. If you're gonna put them in the bigger blades, lay down on the upper rack. So again, you're gonna see them before you actually grab them. So again, just little things, be very careful. And then when you're using the tools, one other key is, and this is hard, I know, because if you have children especially, you're constantly being pulled in every direction. But if you can keep as many distractions away as possible when you're using your knives, good. <laughs> because many, again, people are, are not paying attention as when they you know, go off the rails and hurt themselves. So any, any of the distractions you can get rid of is a better thing to do, obviously, than not. So just some simple basic tips there from a safety perspective as well. Um, when, you're, when it comes to the types of knives that you're choosing to use, Cutco has two different edges, and one of them is unique to Cutco. So most knives have straight edge blades. They're clean straight edges that you can sharpen and do whatever. They're like razor blades would be straight edges without any teeth. And then there's Cutco's edge that has teeth on it. It is not a serration, as a serration cuts with the teeth like a saw. Ours is actually a series of blades that are cut in between those teeth, that cut like straight edges, but don't dull like straight edges. And many of you have seen us do the mug test and all the other different demonstrations that we do with this. Cutting the rope and leather in your home when you saw the demonstration with these, and these things just cut and cut and cut and cut. In fact, how many of you guys have had these blades for more than 10 years before you had them sharpened? Right, most people in this room who have cut coat, that's what these things do, they just go. And these types of tools are designed really for most of your slicing. So anytime it's gonna hit a cutting board or surface, that I'm moving it back and forth, slicing through things, this is the style of knife that I use. The straight edge knives are on paring knives, so knives that you want to peel in a nice, smooth, clean cut. And then they're on the chopping knives as well, because again, I'm just pressing through the food. I'm not really slicing with this knife. I'm just kind of chopping and pressing through the food, as you'll see the techniques here in a bit. And then we also have a straight edge on any of the heavy duty knives that are designed for splitting the butcher's knife, the cleaver, some of those types of knives that again, don't need the heavy duty utility edge because they're really designed for breaking down and kind of forcing through the food. You don't need a real precision cut with that. You want something more hefty and that has a thick blade that's gonna handle all that hard stuff, squash and stuff like that. It's really hard, watermelon, anything tough. So we're gonna focus tonight mostly on the straight edge blades. And then the other thing is, not whether you're slicing or chopping or peeling, but from a cut coat perspective, you know, a lot of companies will sell a bread knife and you only use the bread knife for bread, because what happens if you use the bread knife for everything? It, it quits cutting bread, right? So it doesn't do bread anymore, because a serration wears down and then it doesn't cut. Cutco's edge can cut just about anything. So you want to pick the knife based on the length and the size of the food for the most part. If I'm using something, this knife, I want it to be a little bit bigger than the food. So English muffins and bagels and pineapple and cantaloupe, all that kind of stuff is perfect for a knife that's about this size, because I have room to work through it as opposed to you know, a smaller knife that I have to kind of force through everything. 
So you want the knife to have a little bit of room to actually work back and forth, and again, let the tool do the work. You don't want a little blade that you have to kind of force through everything. Again, that's not letting the tool do the work, that's you, and you're more likely to hurt yourself. So a lot of people look at the bigger knives and they're like, oh, that knife is so huge. Well, again, think about what you're cutting. Sometimes what you're cutting is not gigantic, but you need to have room to work through it. So don't be afraid of the bigger knives. Once you learn how to use them, you're gonna be in good shape. Okay, so when it comes to, um, one last thing when it comes to safety features and whatnot, and this is also just the longevity of your knives. Your cutting surface that you cut on makes a big difference as well. Anytime you cut on any hard surface, some people have glass cutting boards or ceramic cutting boards or marble cutting boards because they look really cool. They also destroy your knives because they have no give to them. They take the edges off almost instantly. So people come in for sharpening all the time and they get their paring knife sharpened up. And then they come back in and they're like, oh, that didn't stay sharp for very long. Well, how, when's, how often did you sharpen it at home after we sharpened it? Never. Well, you need to sharpen these. The straight edge knives need to be sharpened fairly regularly. I sharpen my straight edges at least weekly because I want them to be really, really, really sharp for the reasons I already mentioned, okay? So when you have straight edge knives, you need to have something to sharpen them with. We make a little handheld sharpener which works awesome. Whatever you have at home to sharpen straight edge, if it works, it'll sharpen it. If it doesn't sharpen it, then get something different that works. Again, we can help you with that. But you don't need something fancy to sharpen it. You just need something that works to sharpen it. Um, do any of you guys have one of those sticks at home that you try to, okay? And does anybody know how to use it the right way? Kind of? <laughs> That's the problem with those. It's like nobody really knows how to use them the right way unless they're professionally trained. And if you do it at the wrong angle, it actually makes the knife worse. So we don't even make one of those things because most people are like you, where it's like, yeah, I got one, it came with my set, never really used it because I don't want to cut my hand off when I'm using it, and I don't know what I'm doing. So we make a really simple handheld sharpener that works awesome on any straight edge knife that we can talk about later as well if you want. But the cutting board makes a difference. Our cutting surface, our cutting boards are made out of polypropylene. If you walk into any professional kitchen, this is the material that the chefs are cutting on because it's something that I can bleach, I can put it in the dishwasher and sanitize it, I can, it slices and scratches, so again, it's not killing my knife edges. Um, I can also replace this whenever I want to, because it's got the same cut code guarantee. So over time, it's gonna get scratched and scratched and more scratched, and if you don't like it after a while, then just bring it in, we'll send it out, and they'll send you a brand new one. Any cutting board that you buy, you're going to have to replace over time. If you buy a Cutco one, it's an investment like all the knives are, we'll replace it for you when it needs replacing. So they're a little bit more expensive maybe than one at Target, but you only have to buy it once. That's, again, the key to buying Cutco stuff. Even with the cutting boards, we we'll take care of them guaranteed, okay? So don't worry about uh, having to replace one of those. So the cutting surface does matter, though, so always remember that. Um, the other thing that's, that's not good about using, like, glass cutting boards is the knife slides around them, especially after it dulls very quickly. So then you're, then you're asking for trouble. Again, you want something that's simple. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you guys a couple of simple skills today. We're gonna to start off with the paring knife skills. And we have a big bucket of stuff to cut here. We've got apples and potatoes. So don't, don't grab and start going to town yet. I'm gonna show you the different thing, the, the basic technique here, and then I'm gonna let you guys practice so you guys can get the feel of it. So there's, there are three or four different style of paring knives. I happen to have a four inch paring knife. There's the regular paring knife, which is most of the paring knives that are out on the tables. Um, we've got, Pete's got the Santoku style paring knife and then the bird's beak paring knife. So you've got four different, different paring knives to play with as we do this. They all do basically the same thing. They're designed for peeling, but they all have different style of blades. So they're going to feel different to you based on what kind of things you like to do. So one of the things with the paring knife, again, this is the only knife that I use facing myself. And the simple thing to do, again, you want this to be sharp or it's, it's not gonna be easy to use. So the, the best way to do it is you hold it like you're giving the blade a thumbs up, okay? So just hold it in your hand like the blade, so the blade faces your thumb. The blade, you, you don't want the blade away, you want the blade facing your thumb. Don't touch the blade. <laughs> so, but you want the blade facing your thumb. And then when you're peeling, what you do is you use your thumb to guide around the apple. So basically as I'm peeling through the apple, all I'm doing is this motion with my hand. That's all I'm doing. And when the blade's sharp, it's kind of peeling right through. 
So as I'm doing this, I'm just kind of flexing my hand a little bit and turning the apple and using my thumb to kind of guide it. When you get real good at this, you'll be able to peel a whole apple without the thing falling apart on the floor. <laughs> but that's what, this, that's what these knives are really designed to do. So you can choke up on the blade if you want to. Some people like using the tip and using a real small blade. Um, I, I always hold the handle. Again, that's just how, I, I, how it feels comfortable to me. But all you do is, again, just kind of, all I'm doing is this motion. That's literally all I'm doing. Okay? So for those of you that aren't used to using these knives, again, this is literally all that motion is. I'm just, just flexing my hand a little bit. You don't have to, the thing that people get scared of is they're worried about hitting their thumb and cutting my thumb off. Again, if the knife is sharp, I'm, I'm hardly putting any pressure on this at all. Because the knife is sharp, it's going to do what it's supposed to do. So that's all we're doing. And then you can use the different ones to feel how, how they feel to you. And whichever one is best, that, that's the one that you might like best. So with apples, with, with um, potatoes, it's basically the same thing. Except for potatoes, I don't tend to peel around. I tend to peel down potatoes. But it's the same motion. So I'll, it's again, I'm just doing it. All I'm doing is flexing my hand and letting the, letting the tool do the work. So yes, we have a vegetable peeler, but we're here to learn skills tonight. A vegetable peeler skill is not a, really a skill, I don't think. All it is is pushing. So we're trying to teach you guys skills tonight. So potatoes are cheap and they're soft, so it's easy to practice on these kind of things too. So grab your paring knife and let's just, let's just get into it. I'm gonna walk around and help you guys and give you tips and pointers. But grab an apple and or a potato. We got tons of stuff in this bucket right here on the table to cut. We do have band-aids, but hopefully we won't need to use them. 